right? And transfer pricing is, is you know, a very unique area. I can't say I think it makes paint dry, but I, but I, I do think that, you know, they're so embedded and so many folks just don't realize that, that there's this kind of inverse relationship between the two um, that, you know, Jay and I keep, you know, bumping into these concepts and helping clients do that, you know, um, so, you know, I've been, I'm just strictly a transfer pricing director. That's all we do. Um, but it, it cannot go, you know, one foot without the other. So, uh, Jay, why don't you introduce yourself? Great. Yeah. Um, I'm a customs and tariff director. I, I speak your languages, uh, and the, uh, uh, I, I met Carl through our, um, uh, after I joined Aprio. But, uh, yeah, we, I've been working on a customs valuation for a long time. And the, uh, there's, ha- there's really interesting intersection between transfer pricing and customs valuation. Uh, in fact, we were, Carl and I, we, I were just on a call with the company, exactly on the same issue. The company is multinational company, moving products or consumables or anything and all around the world. They're transacting with the inter, uh, um, intercompanies, like related party transactions. The CEO or CFO, they're saying, oh, I mean, is there a tax issue? I mean, there's a transfer pricing issue. And then, you know, they, but the thing is, they don't really think about the two sides of a coin. Transfer pricing is used as a customs valuation when it when goods are imported into U.S. or any other jurisdictions. So, um, a lot of there, there's a lot of disconnections between tax and in customs, and then really the valuation is the one that kind of connects it. So that's that's we've been all doing. Make sure transfer price is aligned with the customs valuation rules. Well, and the thing too is that having somebody like yourself that is an expert in this particular area, you will help a company navigate through the issues. They can help navigate to the right parties. And and together, you're going to get through this quickly versus somebody just trying to do it all on their own, and they're still not 100% sure. So, you know, having the confidence of here's the knowledge that y'all are bringing to the table, and here's the steps they need to take. Um, it's always good to, if you're going into a, a forest or somewhere to have a guide with you, you're going to get through it quicker. So same thing here is that uh, the, the forest of transfer pricing, should we say. <laughs> I love yep, that. Yeah. Yep. Well, guys, listen, I appreciate your uh, conversation here today. This has uh, been a relatively short conversation, but it's one that uh, has a lot of positive implications here. One, just to know what you've got and how it's valued and how you calculate that. But then going into how you're selling it uh, and transferring it from one entity to the other. And then finally looking at it for, to maximize the efficiency on you know, lowering your tax rate, lowering your duty rate as much as possible and doing it compliantly. Because customs right. focus on the uh, sellers, how much seller is making from this import, uh, sales of imports or sales of goods to uh uh, uh, to related parties. Well, and to your point, let's back up a minute. One of the other things that we need to be looking at, your tax accounting department, especially if it's related parties, obviously, and that's what we're talking about here, needs to also be involved with their counterparts that has the tax accounting for the shipper uh, or yep. the seller. So that needs to come into play too. It's like, okay, well, we have now made the U S entity better and here's the price. And this is what we're going to pay from the IRS perspective for U S taxes and, you know, and the customs. But then we may have just hung out to dry the, the exporter. And it's like, so it's, it's gotta be uh, you're, you're looking for a win win because at the ultimate, this rolls up to one corporation in, in this scenario we're talking about. So, that's another thing point. is so if you're looking for people to get involved, your accounting d- division, um, especially with a global company, you need to have those multiple entities. Yep, yep. And then that's why we, we get involved with the uh, people from both entities usually. Mm-hmm. So get make sure that we are aligned together. Well, and the thing too is that having somebody like yourself that is an expert in this particular area, th- you will help 
a company navigate through the issues, they can help navigate to the right parties. And, and together, you're going to get through this quickly versus somebody just trying to do it all on their own, and they're still not 100% sure. So for customs, um, yeah. I need an ACE data. <laughs> That's all I need, mm -hmm. at least. Or mm -hmm. intercompany pricing policies. Um, usually that's embedded in, in a distribution agreements uh, or other commercial documents. But anything related to how you price your imported products is the most important thing. I want to look mm -hmm. at how much your volume of imports um, and the uh, duty spending as well. Okay. Hang on. You said financial statements of what? Of the company or of checking accounts or what? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Financial statements of the legal entity. So, for example, most likely okay. in this case, U.S. company, right? The, the, the importer of record company. See what they're shaking out because just a really good rule of thumb for, for the listeners is, you know, if you're an importer and you're, you're just reselling the goods that come in and you resell them to the customers and you have been making operating losses for a prolonged period of time and you're not able to explain that away, that's going to be the biggest red flag. That's going to be the biggest red flag that IRS has campaigned for for many years now, probably 10 years. They have these inbound distributor, inbound distributor campaigns. So those type of things are very good indicators that your intercompany pricing, your transfer pricing are, are not in compliance.